And once you see this, you literally cannot unsee it. You will start noticing it in every aspect of life. Hello there everyone, it's Nat here, aka The Wolf of Watertown, and I've got a very good one for you guys today. Now, if there's one thing that most people don't have enough of, that is time. There's only 24 hours in a day, and it's important to make sure that each hour counts. I'm not going to sit here and make some crazy spiel about sleeping 4 hours a day or waking up at 4 or 5 a.m. However, I'm going to discuss the best method to use in order to make your days and hours more efficient so you can get the important things done. But before I get into it, make sure to subscribe and like and hit that bell button so you get notifications on all my new videos. So quick story, back in my sophomore year of college, I took this class for business majors known as operations management. And my teacher at the time, Major Perlick, would always say this one statement and it still sticks with me to this day. Ops is all around us. This means that operations is all around us. Literally every facet of life you look at, you will see an operations management issue. The whole class was focused on finding the most efficient way to operate a system in order to make sure you get the most out of its value. Now, if you get the recommended eight hours of sleep each night, I know for sure I don't and the majority of you probably don't either. And that leaves at least 16 hours, probably more each day you have to be productive and get the most out of the day. However, productivity doesn't always mean straining and overworking yourself. After all, so a part of life is about enjoying some aspects, things that you actually enjoy and things that are important and valuable to you as a person. So let's break down what the task planning quad chart really is and what it's all about. So I actually learned this method from my former company commander. And at first I thought he was just very lazy and just putting his work on to me. As my responsibilities grew, I quickly learned that this was a very effective method and I started implementing it myself. So in this task quad chart, you have two rows. The first is gonna be urgent for all priority items. And then the second row is going to be non-urgent. On the urgent row, you're going to have two columns. One is going to be do it now. And the second is going to be delegate. Delegate meaning that someone else can do the work for you. In the not urgent row, you're also going to have two columns. The first column is going to be plan. And the second column is going to be do later. Now from left to right, these columns are going to go from important to not important. Important as in something that you must do, you yourself and no one else. And not important as in someone else can do it for you. So now that we have our four parameters established, let's talk about each grid square and see what exactly meets the requirement in order to fit into a specific box. So in our top left, we have the urgent do it now. What exactly does this mean? These are gonna be the most critical tasks in your day that only you can complete. No one else can do it but you. And the way you sort out these tasks is you prioritize them based off your urgency. So I'm going to use real estate for example purposes to show you how I would prioritize some of the tasks that come along with being a real estate investor. So let's say in my urgent do it now, my first is to find leads, which is just finding more properties and deals that I could potentially make an offer on. And the second thing on my list in that same category is to fill a vacancy. So a tenant moved out and I need to find a new tenant to replace them. In that situation, I will prioritize filling the vacancy because if I don't fill the vacancy, that diminishes my cash flow, which is the money I make each month from rent. And this cash flow will eventually lead to help funding my next lead whenever I find a property that fits the certain criteria I'm looking for. Now let's focus on the things that are urgent, but you can delegate. These tasks are tasks that are usually for other people. Though these tasks are very important, they can be accomplished by other people and your time is better else spent somewhere more effective. Let's say I would delegate, for instance, to my agent, hey, I wanna make an offer for this much and it's their responsibility to write the offer up and submit it to the seller. Or it could be something like hiring a property manager to make sure that your investment is being properly taken care of so you can focus on other things. Don't mistake this for having to hire someone to do your work for you. You can literally find anyone who's capable of doing the same job you are, but yet has the time to fulfill it for you. In instance, think your spouse, your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your coworker, anyone who's capable of doing the same skill you are, but yet you have more important things to handle, so you're 
allowing them to take care of it while you focus on more important things, maybe things that will generate you more cash. Now, when you come to things that are not urgent, the first column is going to be to plan. Now, these are typically longer term or reoccurring tasks. Therefore, you need to plan the appropriate time for you to actually execute them. Remember that things in these columns are things that you cannot hand off to someone else. These are still tasks that you must do. For instance, let's say you pay some sort of utilities in your rental unit. Not necessarily need to pay on the first of each month, but you need to make sure you pay by the 15th. So you're going to schedule some point in time in your schedule in order to make that payment. In your personal life, this might be a task such as going to the gym. Now, you're not necessarily going to die from not going to the gym, but it is important to you. It's not like you can have someone else go to the gym for you and see the same results. And even though you have a busy day, you look at your schedule, make a plan and say, hey, maybe at 6 p.m. I'll go to the gym so I can take care of this other main priority items throughout the day. The last quadrant we have is a not urgent do later quadrant. This is your absolute bottom of the barrel priorities. Typically, these are seen as non-productive tasks. For instance, you should just delay, delegate, or just straight up delete these tasks. In real estate, that would be something sort of like, well, the fence isn't that appealing. I think I want to paint the fence. Now let's think, will painting the fence really make you more income? And the answer is probably not would also be pretty inexpensive to pay someone to just paint it for you. Better yet, just leave it alone and don't worry about it at all. This planning quad chart really helps you focus on the big prizes instead of focusing on the small everyday nuisances that seem to occur when you're not expecting it. Once you can really map out and plan out what's really important to you, you're able to be more focused and be more efficient in using your time. For instance, when it comes to personal finance and budgeting, Everyone is focused on saving money on the small items such as coffee. However, you're not going to live the rest of your life in poverty just because you buy a white chocolate mocha from Starbucks every single morning. Venti, of course. And if you focus on more of the big prizes such as getting your credit score up, you could actually save yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars. Now that's a big win. Now, let's say you have all your tasks laid out, but you don't exactly know how to prioritize them or which one should take precedence over the other. This is when the contingency planning or decision matrix comes in handy. So this chart has an X axis that goes horizontally and a Y axis that goes up and down. So on your low axis, on the far left end, you're going to have low impact to the far right where you're going to have catastrophic. You could go from something as easy as not making your bed in the morning, whatever impact that's going to have, till not paying your mortgage for the past three months and getting foreclosed on. And on your y-axis, what you're going to have on the bottom is unlikely and all the way at the top, you're going to have likely. So we're going to take all the tasks that you have to do and you guessed it, we're going to actually plot them on the coordinates. So let's say you're in a class, right? And you only have two tests in that whole class that determines your final grade. And you're asking yourself, do I study for this test or do I not? Uh, what's the likelihood that you're going to pass the class if you don't study? So you determine that it's very likely that you will fail the class if you don't study. And then you have to think, what is the impact of you potentially failing this class? So now you know that whenever you plot this task of studying for the test, it's going to be very high on the y-axis because it's very likely that you will not pass the class if you do not study. And then you have to think, what are the actual effects of not passing the class? And we have on our x-axis, very low impact to very catastrophic. As a college student, you're going to be a lot closer to catastrophic than low impact if you were to potentially fail the test. The reason being that if you fail the class, that means you just threw away tuition money and you're going to potentially have to retake the class again. If you retake the class, that means more of your time is being wasted again on yet another semester, which could also potentially delay you graduating on time. So in this particular situation, you would probably decide that it's in your best interest to study for this test. So once you plot all your tasks on that chart, you can then take it to the quadrant and then figure out which quadrant to actually place each individual task. That is how you go about solving your day-to-day, month-to-month, year-to-year problems. You have to prioritize the big things in order to win big. So quote Major Perlick again, 
options all around us. That's all I got for you guys today. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell button so you can get updates on any new videos. Make sure to leave a comment on something you picked up today that you think would be beneficial in your life or something else you could add to the conversation to help us all grow and develop as people. See you next time.